In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a kinetic typography animation inspired by Pixrate. Now, it's been a while since we have made a kinetic typography inspired by Pixrate. As always, a huge shout out to Pixrate for its amazing works. Also, don't forget to download the project files for free at the Patreon. Now, let's just start. Alright, so here we are inside of Adobe After Effects and now let's begin. So, as usual, we need to design our text. So, what I'm going to do is that I'm just going to create a new composition. And I'm going to call it text animation and the width and height. I'm going to set it on 9020 by 9020. The duration is 10 seconds, which is fine. Great. Now what I'm going to do is that I'm just going to write the text. So let's just adjust it. And now same as the second text. And we need to decrease its size a bit. And let's just turn down the stretching to 100 as well. Okay, this is good. And let's just just a bit further. Now we need to duplicate these layers. And I'm going to change their color so we don't confuse them. And we need to reverse the action. So I'm just going to quickly do that. All right, this is good. Now on the next step, what we need to do is that we need to create shapes from these texts. And let's delete the original text layers. We don't need them anymore. And as you have already guessed, we need to create a letter morphing animation, which we usually do in the Pix Rate series. So what I'm going to do is that I'm just gonna select the first set of keyframes and I'm gonna go towards the crazy shapes and I'm gonna set some path keyframes. And then I'm just going to move towards one second and I'm going to select the keyframes and I'm going to paste it for the layers. So we don't need these two layers. Let's just delete it so uh, it doesn't confuse us. So as you see, we will have something like this and uh, one is in here. The same layers should go up. So I'm just going to push it up. Okay, this is good. Okay, everything is good. And we can now finish the loop. And I'm gonna apply the standard easings on it. However, let's just trim the composition to two seconds. All right, this was easy. Now let's move towards the next step, which we need to design the displacement map. So what I'm going to do is that I'm just gonna create a new composition and I'm gonna call it the displacement map. All right, I'm gonna bring the text animation in here. And now what I'm going to do is that I'm just gonna create a new solid layer and I'm gonna call it map. Now let's just apply the gradient ramp effect. I'm just gonna change the start color to here and the end ramp to here. All right, this is all we want for the displacement map. And now let's just hide it. I'm just gonna go towards the text animation and I'm gonna apply the time displacement map effect. Let's just change the displacement layer to map and let's just change it to effects and mask as well. And I'm going to change the time resolution to 200. So let's just uh, decrease the quality for wall. As you know, the time displacement is a little bit heavy. So this will be our animation. But as you see, it will end after two seconds. So we need to enable the time remapping. But however, if I start to increase the time remapping, as you see, our animation sort of gets hidden. So to fix that problem, all we need to do is that we need to add a loop out expression for the time remapping. So now everything is good. So these lines here is because of the quarter. You know, we set, we have set the render mode on quarter. If we set it on full, everything will get fixed. But however, I'm just gonna still work on the quarter so we can work faster. Now, what we can do is that we can add a sort of a texture for ourselves. So to do that, what we can do is that I'm just going to add a Gaussian blur effect and we can set the blurness, for example, to 50. And then we can add a curves effect and we can change the channel to alpha and we can push the darker and brighter channels to here. So we will have something like this. Let's just quickly set it on full so we can see it for a moment. 
so as you see we will have a nice texture around our um, text so this is good now let's go towards the next step which is adding the textures so I'm just gonna create a main comp which is our final design and I'm gonna create a new solid layer and I'm gonna call it background so this is good and now what we need to do is that we need to bring the displacement map effect we cannot see it and we can add a fill effect all right this is good now on the next step what we need to do is that we need to sort of create a half tone texture for ourselves to well to do that I'm just gonna create a new composition and I'm gonna call it texture And now what I'm going to do is that I'm just going to create a new solid layer and I'm just going to call this one noise and OK. And then what I'm going to do is that I'm just going to add a fractal noise effect. So what I'm going to do is that I'm just going to increase the contrast to say let's 150 and then I will increase the brightness to let's say like 50 as well. And then I'm just going to navigate through the transform panel and then what I'm going to do is that I'm just going to increase the scale let's say on 250 and this will be our noise design and then on the next step what i would need to do is that i need to design a half tone texture so in order to design the half tone texture i'm just gonna create a new adjustment layer and the reason for creating an adjustment layer is that i want the half tone texture affects the noise texture as well so what i'm going to do is that i'm just gonna call this one half tone and I'm going to add the CC ball action effect. Now what I'm going to do is that I'm just going to change the ball size to 50. And then what I'm going to do on the next step is that I'm just going to set the shading to 100. So this is good. Now on the next step I want to rotate the half tone texture. So to do that I'm just going to add a transform effect. And I'm going to set the rotation on 45 degree. But as soon as I do that you will see that we will have some black gaps in here. Well, to fix that, we can just duplicate the transform layer and we can push it above the CC ball action. Well, this is really important. We need to push it above. And then I'm just going to clockwise rotate it. So this will fix the issue. And now we can add a fill effect to colorize the background. And however, if I want to set it on black, as you see, we will not be able to see anything. So then we can add a solid composite layer so this will allow us to add a layer, add a color to our layer. So this is exactly what we want. We have some black halftone textures with white background. That is good. Now we can uh, still make it um, even better by adding a Gaussian blur effect. So this will allow us to add a bit more texture into it. And then what we can do is that we can add a blend mode sort of to our texture by adding a CC composite effect. So as soon as I do that, as you, as you see, we will not see anything. So we need to change the transform uh, mode into a layer, uh, a blend mode layer. So I'm just going to change it to hard mix. So this is good. And then what we can do is that we can add a tint effect at the end. So this will help us to colorize it if we want. But if you want to even take this texture further, you can duplicate this layer and you can place it in here and set the Gaussian blur to 2 so this will make the texture better all right this is good now what we need to do is that I'm just going to go towards the main one and I'm going to bring the texture in here okay this is good so let's just mm, place it in here and now what I'm going to do is that I'm just going to set the texture on the screen so we'll have something like this now as you see we will barely see the text so to fix that problem we can add an invert effect so this is good now if we back to the text animation we can still add a few more effects to make it even better so what i'm going to do is that i'm just going to add a turbulent displace effect and then i'm just going to set the amount to let's say like 30 and the size on 10. now let's just set the complexity on 5. so this is good now on the next step, I'm just going to add a displacement map effect and I'm going to get the texture and also let's just change it to effects and masks. And now I'm just going to increase the um, max horizontal and vertical displacement. And let's also change the map behavior to stage map to fit. So this will be our texture. 
Now we are currently working on a full render so this will get a lot of time to render so I will keep continuing adding the texture and we will find a preview it at the end. So what I'm going to do is that I'm just going to go towards the texture. I'm going to duplicate it one more time and let's just delete the invert effect and let's this time let's set it on multiply. So as you see we will have this texture. Let's just change this opacity a bit. All right, this looks good. Now let's get back to the assets panel and I'm going to bring the first texture and I'm going to set this mode on multiply. And then let's just bring the paper texture in here. And then I'm just going to set its mode. Uh, let's just choose a difference mode. And lastly, let's just select the, bring the third texture and let's just set it on add. This is good. And we can add a post rest time effect at the end. And we can set its frame rate on 12. So this will be our animation. Let's just preview it. So now, as you see, we will have a small issue in here. So we need to enable the time remapping for the displacement layer as well. So let's just delete it. I'm just going to set it, for example, for two to four seconds. And we can add a loop out cycle expression as well. And here's final result and I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you have enjoyed this video don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel as it would help me out a lot for the future content. Thank you so much. Goodbye.